Welcome to Shipping Insight TV, where we interview maritime industry thought leaders to learn their views on how industry's drive to optimize and innovate is shaping the future. Good day and welcome to Shipping Insight TV. Joining us today is Steve Smirocco, who is Vice President for Moran Shipping. Steve, welcome to Shipping Insight TV. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here, Colleen. Well, we're delighted to have you because what we want to know today is what is new and exciting at Moran Shipping? Uh, quite frankly, it's offshore wind this week. Uh, as of Monday, the U.S. Bureau of Ocean Management uh, has issued a long-awaited uh, approval for the Vineyard Wind Project. Well, congratulations on that, but why now, and what is the scope of this opportunity? Um, I think the scope of the opportunity is how it affects the, the ports uh, from North Carolina all the way to Massachusetts. This is going to be the first major project of its kind, um, especially in the Northeast and Massachusetts, and uh, so this is a really big step in, in, in development of offshore wind in, in each of those ports. Well, how does offshore wind factor into the energy mix? What are the projections? So right now there's uh, one offshore wind um, farm that's in operation off a of block, it's on Block Island or off of Block Island in Rhode Island. Um, it, it's operating successfully. Uh, it's five wind turbines, 30 megawatt capacity. And uh, the development of offshore wind will aid in each of the states affected from North Carolina all the way to, to Massachusetts, um, aiding in their uh, renewable energy initiatives. Well, what does this mean for the respective ports? You've talked about a large part of the East Coast. Um, which ports exactly are going to be impacted and what can they look to, how can they look to benefit? Uh, so primarily in the Northeast, um, you have the ports of New York, New Jersey, Baltimore, uh, Boston, obviously, Providence. Um, and this is a great opportunity for uh, local jobs, capital investment into the ports, which is always important, including dredging. Uh, ports are always looking for um, investment into uh, the ports. So, And of course, it's a green new source of energy, so it's exciting. Um, it, it's exciting for Moran um, from the perspective because we are positioned perfectly within the ports that'll be needed in order for offshore wind development. We have offices in almost every major seaport. We'll be able to use years of vessel agency, husbandry experience, uh, as well as logistical experience. It couldn't be a more fitting industry for Moran uh, local content is very important because this is such a new business in the United States. International clients can benefit uh, greatly through our network of vendors and local contacts. Well, excellent. There's going to be, well, I was on a call earlier today and uh, Rear Admiral Rich Timmy was talking about this, uh, this burgeoning opportunity with offshore. And one of the aspects he mentioned is that they, with the Coast Guard's role, one of its roles is to guarantee the fairways for shipping. Because above all, you know, you are maritime professionals and you'll be best able to advise your clients on not only the deployment of these new wind farms, but also how they can navigate around them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got vineyard wind coming and I think there's going to be a wind project off of Long Island, maybe in the New York bite. Yeah, uh, let me give you a little better idea. So we have Empire Wind, there's Atlantic Shore, uh, Offshore. There's there's basically, there's 10 projects that span from um, North Carolina all the way through Massachusetts. So um, there's gonna be a lot of activity for port partners, stakeholders, the Coast Guard, Customs is gonna be very busy. Uh, we're gonna hear a lot about the Jones Act. Um, to say the least, it's going to be exciting, um, and that's what I think is the most exciting for somebody like me. You know, I'm a shipping agent at heart, and um, I've never had the opportunity to service this type of business, obviously, 
my experience offshore is uh, an LNG facility, two LNG facilities off the coast of uh, Gloucester. And uh, we played a part in the construction of the pipeline for that. Um, but this is just new, it's, it's different um, and people really get energized about it. Well, it sounds as though we finally, after 10 plus years, been able to overcome the legislative hurdles, but there are still other uh, challenges and barriers. Um, where do you see the greatest challenge next in terms of being able to service this industry? I think that the biggest hurdle for us is going to be um, workforce development and infrastructure. Um, and you have uh, places like Mass Mar Massachusetts Maritime Academy that are that are getting ahead of this and trying to um, provide training and, and, and aid the workforce development. Um, and as far as infrastructure, there's real constraints with uh, air draft and uh, beam of vessels and deep draft and um, primarily, I would say, for air draft. So uh, there really needs to be infrastructure made in the Northeast so that um, we can really uh, aid to the offshore wind development. Well, um, it sounds to me as though Moran shipping is perfectly positioned to capture the wind of the offshore industry, wind industry. So congratulations to you and to Moran Shipping. Thank you very much. I think that we are definitely positioned, especially uh, the Northeast so far. I think that we need to make this first project operational as soon as possible so that the country can really realize the benefits of um, offshore wind energy, just as we have with uh, solar power, for instance. So. Um, Thank you for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Well, good luck. Fair winds and following seas. <laughs> Thanks, Carlene. Same to you.